Hello there everyone, welcome back to another Gate Ruler video. We're going to be continuing the big old faction review series with another absolute girth-tastic video. <laughs> this time going over all of the Volnar cards. There are a lot of them, so we'll get started very shortly. First, I have to give my usual preface. It, as the time of this recording, it's about a month since the game has come out. Um, so obviously that is the length of time I am working off of. It is physically impossible for me to be aware of some crazy new strat that is revealed in two weeks from now or something that people find that changes how good a certain card is. So yeah, and uh, obviously these are my opinions. Uh, I will inevitably be wrong about some of them. Um, feel free to laugh at me in the comments. All right, so uh, that's the prefacing out of the way. Let's get started. And um, we're starting with the big boy. Magvarius. So, uh, this is uh, obviously a very strong legend. Um, let's uh, let's just we'll just list off the reasons. It's a seven seven three. It's the best stats you can get for three. Uh, it is a uh, the the effect of it is the counter is ridiculous. Um, basically, as long as you see this uh, outside of your first like three damage, this is going to do something, and probably something quite good. You can also Genesis summon this and still get the effect. Uh, I think that's kind of the main reasons this card is so good, and uh, I think those reasons are sufficient for me to say this card is insane. Um, if you can fit this card in a deck, you generally will want to. It's, <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> Definitely a very, very, very strong card. Um, yeah, I mean, if it wasn't Legend, you'd be playing four of it, more than likely. So, Blaster Vortex. This is another, this is uh, the next Volnar Legend, and second of their three Legends they get. Three! Three! This one's also very good. So this one costs two, no counter, uh, in the, so you set this and play it when an enemy unit attacks, and you destroy all enemy units except the center line in the front row. So at the moment that just means not the defensive row, but the way this is worded, the syntax, implies there's gonna be some other shit happening later on. But we're talking about right now, and right now this card is cracked. Um, the obvious downside to this card is if you uh, see it and uh, you see it in damage or you are not able to play it, like it's destroyed or something. Outside of those things that are entirely out of your control, uh, if you're willing to take the risk on playing a legend that will, you know, is a very high likelihood it's not going to do anything for you in the game, because the odds of damaging it are pretty high, uh, the games where you do see it, this will probably swing the game. And uh, that's that's probably worth playing. Uh, yeah, this card is it's a uh, it's really good. You have this done against you once. That's enough. <laughs> that is enough to be very aware of the strength of this card. Next, you've got Platinum King Alberfort. This is a seven six two with breakthrough, and when it is special summoned by Genesis, you heal one. So um, this card as a just blanket three blanket just just have another three cost. It's really strong. Um, seven attack, so it's going to be clearing everything. Um, breakthrough, so it's still dealing damage. Um, and six HP means it's you know not not easy to get over. Uh, it is susceptible to all of the really strong forms of removal in the game, and you're obviously going to be seeing those a lot. So in that sense, yes, it is significantly weaker than a 7-7 seven, seven would be, but um, obviously that is by design. Uh, obviously this is cracked in Genesis Summoning. This is your main target because uh, it's going to be healing you, and it's really, really threatening for your opponent. And uh, yeah, um, very, very powerful in Genesis Summoning. Not too useful outside of that at the moment. Um, but yeah, strong card. Viola. Well, 763 here. Um, the Abyss Concerto condition being pretty hard to fulfill. Um, the normal effect, you can pay one energy and discard it to draw one, so that's a nice bit of filter there. Uh, and when it's special summoned by Abyss Summoning, you board wipe everything. So this is also a dragon. So you can Genesis summon this, which is an option, which uh, you will find yourself doing in Gen Abyss if you, uh, may, if you run out of targets, basically. Or if you want to do it early on in the game to set it up uh, Viola in your drop. So that is quite nice, but outside of that, uh, I'm not a massive fan of this card because of just how difficult it is to get off. And the fact that there'll be times when you can summon it where you just won't want to because it'll actually end up negging you more than it pluses you. Um, because obviously you're going to lose your board as well when you summon this. So that's worth considering. Um, yeah, overall, I think it's, it's you know, the it's obviously the effects are so strong that it deserves being so difficult to get out. 
Um, so it's like an okay card. It's like it, you run this in darkness, but you don't really want this in anything else. Um, outside of those like Abyss Summon Focus decks. Um, and even in those, it's not like your primary target or anything. So it's just kind of eh. I know, I could be wrong, but I'm not a massive, massive fan of this card. Abyss Master Alighieri was a darkness uh, touchdown to mill one, and this has the Abyss Summoning effect. So yeah, um, this is obviously staple in the Abyss Summoning deck. Um, we're still figuring really it out at the moment as to how make to make it as you know best as possible. Still not sure if it's just not that good or if our builds are not good. Um, at the moment, it seems like you actually don't really want to be running that many summoners. The Abyss Summoning is sort of a background thing you do as like a nice option. Uh, and you want your deck to be able to function even if you don't get any. Um, so in that sense, yes, this is staple, but um, you actually don't play four. Um, you, you play like two to three from what I've seen, um, which is nice, makes the deck cheaper. Um, yeah, the uh, it's obviously a very good card. Uh, it would be even better if it had 3 HP. Just, 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 just a little more HP, just a little more, but yeah. Uh, good card, essential to uh, Abyss Summon. Creation Summon, the Eternal Genesis Summon, this one is way better. Um, yeah, this card is so much stronger. This is a one card Genesis Summon. It has 3 HP, so it's uh, much less susceptible to Malevolus Prime. It has two Strike as opposed to one, so you can actually smash face. Um, you revive a familiar, so it's creating a board for you. You can revive dog, which is another two strike unit, so you're paying two for four strike here, making a board if you don't want a Genesis summon, so you can have like a stronger damage output. Um, I, everything about this card is amazing. Um, if you can play this card, you generally will want to. Sky King Aris. So this is a Wind Warrior. Uh, 4 4 2. When it's Genesis summoned, you heal 1 and it has Defender. So a nice thing about this is because it's a Warrior, you can actually use this to Genesis summon again. So, for example, you can play Paula, Familiar, Genesis Summon, into Aris. Aris heals one. If it survives, which granted is not necessarily too likely, but if it survives on the next turn, you can play another Paula, Genesis Summon those two away, and make something else, like an Alberfort, for example. So that's a nice option to have. Um, and, of course, you know, Defender is a very powerful keyword, 442 Defender. This is just a 442 Defender anyway, which is, you know, arguably worth the two regardless. Um, and the fact that it's also a nice Genesis summoning target is a bonus. Also, the Uber Air looks very nice. So yeah, good card. Demonic Dragon of Shadows Shadraper. Oh, I... Uh, this is a Dragon Darkness. This is very nice for Mixed because of those attributes. You can Genesis summon into this, um, and it is, of course, a Dragon. It is, of course, Darkness, rather. The counter, also untapping one of your energy, is nice. And it's a really cheap Abyssal Concerto, uh, like, this is basically free to do. Um, but, using one of your Abyss Summons on this feels bad. And, there are just so many good counters you want to run, that it, I, I'm, uh, I'm just not a fan of this card, but I'm also, I also just think the deck is pretty mediocre. So that is colouring my impression of it as well. I don't think it's bad, I just think, like, I don't necessarily, at the moment, see the value in, you know, doing something- Okay, obviously I understand, you know, being able to transform your level 1, 2, 2, 1 into a 4, 5, 1 for basically free is, is great and all, um, but I'm pretty sure there are, there are level 1 vanillas with very comparable stats to 4, 5, 1. In fact, there's Pojimu, which is a 2, 5, 2, which is arguably better than a 4, 5, 1. Debatable. There are level zeros that are a five two two, three, a five two one, for example, which you know much greater hitting power. Uh, so I mean, you know, I, I'm just saying that I'm I'm not entirely convinced on the value of this card, and I think it's pretty okay. Paula, this is a very strong card. Touchdown to discard one, uh, draw one. This is a uh, synergistic with uh, abyss summon because you can set up darkness in your drop zone. And this is um, nice in, uh, in Genesis Summon because it lets you filter and it lets you set up your drop zone with familiars. And it's also a Genesis Summoner. Gosh, it's good. It's a Genesis Summoner. It's all you, all you need, really. Explosive Arts Wolf. This card is amazing. I'm a big, big fan of this card. So this is a Fire Wizard, so you can use this for Genesis Summoning. It's a 2-1-2. Two, two, two strike. Very nice on a level 1. And, touchdown, burn 2 to an enemy unit. All sorts of good stuff here. Big, big fan of, uh, of this. 
Um, yeah, this card is really, really strong. Big, big fan of it. Uh, you can imagine the setup with some guns and gold, for example, to suddenly be doing burn three, burn four for one. Oh, that's nice. Red Dragon Crimson Siltus. Here we've got another dragon. It's a 4 5 2, so very, very, very nice stats there. And when it's Genesis summoned, you choose an enemy unit and deal 3 damage to it, so that's also very nice. Um, this card is good. Uh, you know, I think, um, well, I think the best one of these level 2 targets is uh, in the starter deck, and we'll come to that later. But this is definitely a really solid option. Um, generally speaking, you will be preferring to go to an Aris over this because the odds of a burn 3 being super good are relatively unlikely, but I think this is a good option, and I've seen lots of decks running it, and I, yeah, I think it's perfectly fine to do. It's a solid card. Star Song. So here we have the first actual just... I, I just think this is a bait. <laughs> I just think this is a bait at the moment. At the moment. I'll immediately have to clarify that because we know that one of the rulers in set 2 is called Wizard and that has 8 energy. And in a deck with 8 energy this card is going to be really really strong because you can still do things after you play it. At the moment, you play this in Night, you have to pay 2 of your energy. So if you don't have either a Disaster or a Win-Win setup or a 0 and a 1 to play or an Untapper into a 2 or an Untapper into a 1 to play, so I if you don't have this essential combo like together to play this, then this card sucks. Or unless you're playing this literally turn one. So the scenarios where this card is really strong, or like not even strong, just good, not like leaving you behind, are pretty niche. So at the moment, I think it's actually quite a bad card. But in the future, I think this card will be much better. Forest of Killers. This is a the beast the beast set, um, and this is an absolute stable four of in beast. Uh, like you, you, you have to play this. This card is what makes beasts so scary. Oh, the energy booster. So this is a warrior. So this is uh, nice to have um, with uh, with Genesis summoning. Uh, um, it's very clear that Ikeda imagines Genesis summoning as this gate ruler version of synchro summoning. So expect in the future there to be things that are like, if this card is Genesis summoned with three or more materials, and you'll be wanting cards like this level zero um, warrior to use for that. Um, so there's that future potential, and also the current potential of you need to play energy boosters at night because they really, really help. <laughs> so yeah, double reasons why this card is really great. Um, I gushed about um, the Atlas version. I'm not gonna gush about this one quite as much, but the point is it's really good. Monster Wolverine. I slept on this card. I really did sleep on this card when I first saw it. Um, this card is really, really good because it doesn't really matter. Like the <coughs> the stats don't really matter. Um, what matters is you're going to counter check this and you're going to put it in your center, and that's essentially going to block two to three damage. And for that reason alone, it is great. The fact this is a zero is actually a bonus because it, it you don't you really don't care about the stats. But if you draw it, you can just play it, and it doesn't matter. You can just chuck in your center. It's going to block an attack or soak some burn. That's good. Flying shield. So you can use this to reduce any ally, uh, any damage, essentially, by two. It's quite versatile, but of course, um, you know, it's only reducing by two. So there is that. Um, I am a fan of this card because, generally speaking, your opponent is going to be planning for exact damage. Then, like... Obviously, good opponents will be factoring these kind of things in, but you don't have to play it. You can just save it. Fundamentally, this is always going to be something you can just use on yourself on a two-strike attack. Fundamentally, there's always a thing you can do. And when your opponent does not play around a flying shield, this can screw up their whole turn. So, it's a really strong card, um, and I think you should try it out. Here we got the 533 Vanilla. This is a darkness, a beast, and a traitor. We know all of those attributes mean something. Um, obviously, cracked in beasts. This is uh, it's amazing in beasts. Um, darkness, you don't really play this. And traitor, we will see, but the implication for traitor seems to be that it's um, very uh, Hundred Demons esque, if you remember what that is. Um, so, this will probably see play in that. But uh, yeah, vanillas are good. Are good. Flame Geyser. This is a level 2 uh, counter. Um, it says field, but that is a mistake. Um, 
so counter is to play this and uh, you just destroy a level one or lower enemy unit and I just don't think that's very good. Yes, it is hard destruction and that's why it's so expensive. And I like that it's so expensive because I do not want cheap hard destruction. I've seen what that can do to a game. I think we've all seen what that can do to a game. So I'm very okay with this being ridiculously expensive and therefore pretty much unplayable. Black Knight Dista, 4-3-2, Vanilla is good. Warrior, good. Traitor, good. Darkness, good. Card, good. Bull Taurus, 4-4-2. Talked about this in in, uh, in the last two faction reviews. Um, the, yeah, 4-4-2 is strong stats and uh, stats are scary. Golden Dog, 4-2-2. So this is um, the dog I mentioned with Shiori, where if you revive this, you're getting four strike on board for two, which is great. Um, yeah, this card is really good for that primarily. Um, other than that, it is a four attacking unit, which is nice. Um, it is a beast, which is also nice, um, and that's why you do actually you do actually see Shiori being played in beasts a lot, um, because you can obviously use this to revive that, and with set spells out, this is going to be pretty strong, uh, and you know, you're just making a board out of nowhere, which is which is really nice. So yeah, um, all around card is, card is good. Shield of Shalsana. So... <sighs> I'm not a big fan of this card, but a lot of people are. So um, the the argument for this is when you hit this as a counter late in game, this is essentially heal too, which is obviously true. Um, and you can also use this whenever you're being directly attacked. It's a reduced to zero. That's great. You do have to pay one for it though. And personally, I would rather play Absolute Barrier because it's free. And I do understand like, I do understand the value of that extra heal, but personally, I'd rather always be able to null an attack to zero than sometimes um, have, like, be forced to play an unoptimal turn just to be able to potentially do this on my opponent's turn. But that's just my opinion. I'm aware the card is good. I'm just not a massive fan. Dispel. This, fan, this card, on the other hand, I'm a massive fan of. So, uh, the counter on this it will pop sets or fields, and the main effect on this will uh, let you nullify events. Your opponent, I guarantee you, they're never playing around this, ever. Um, this will screw them up. They'll do something like, oh, I'm gonna pay two to play my Captain Liberty, and then I'm gonna cast a win-win, and you flip a dispel, and your opponent just cries. <laughs> um, yeah, it's good stuff. This can also be really, really good for just securing a game, because every single reduced to zero is one cost or lower. Every single one, so. You can just use this to go, nope, I'm winning, and they go, ah. Oh. And that do be how it be. Call lining. I think this card sucks. Interdimensional War. I... I just think this card's not very good. I, I, I was a big fan of it before, but at the moment, I just think the decks that can play it are just not really good enough. The card is good, the card is good. Um, you'll play this and like there'll be turns where you just heal for <laughs> like you'll generate something you just go okay heal for uh, and they'll be like yeah all right sure that's fair um, it's yeah it's it's a strong card I but I just think the decks that you put it in are not super great and you don't necessarily want to play this in Genesis summon but yeah I don't, I don't know I don't know this card's good card's good card's good this is a level 0 Wind Warrior Light 3-2-1 with touchdown to become level 1. I really think this card sucks, which to me means there is a reason in the future that this why this card was printed. That will make this card ridiculous because almost every single card in the game is good, right? There doesn't really seem to be much if any chaff cards the cards that are chaff you can see uses in in the future for example even call lightning it's hard destruction so that's probably going to be useful in the future so this will probably have a use fuck knows what it is i imagine it's going to be the wind light trading because as we move towards more and more synchro like summoning we'll get a summoner that's like choose a warrior wind Choose a warrior light to summon with, and you're like, hmm, and you're like, oh, I have to play that because the card that I get to summon out of this was cracked, for example. That's my prediction. We'll see if I'm right about it. 
Hydra Familiar. It's a good familiar. Um, yes, yeah, it's a good familiar. It's a beast, which is nice as well. You imagine front and Volnar allied troop. This card is really, really good. This card is really, really good and really low key good. So military, important. Warrior, important. But one five one. I'm telling you. Because this is a zero, the amount of times you will just slap this in the center and your opponent will be like, are you fucking kidding me? This dude just put a five HP defender in the center for free. Trust me, this card is really good. Try it out. And especially if you have like, if you're playing with like a, you know, a plus HP card or reduced damage to zero card uh, to a unit, your opponent's going to have a, a bad time. Okay, here we, we have arrived at the secret, so we're at the end of the main set, and we're moving on to the start deck in a second. <sighs> Hellfire of Magvarius. I hate that this card exists, because it's like a really rare card, and I think it's like $140 right now or something. The one mistake Gate Ruler has made, in my opinion, the one actual legit mistake is something like this. Hopefully it gets a reprint, in which case I will retract that statement, and this will be a perfect game. But other than that, let's talk about it. So, counter... Pop an enemy unit in the attack zone. It's very good. Normal use timing. Destroy all level 2 or lower enemy units in the attack zones. It's also very good. This is a card that I think has very strong future potential. At the moment, I don't think it's particularly good. Um, it's pretty hard to justify running this card. And it's also hard to justify the cost. But in the future... I think as we see decks that come out and rulers that come out that are like much more focused on just shitting out units, we're gonna see this be cracked. Because this is just gonna go mm, board wipe and your opponent's gonna go, ah. Oh. I'm telling you, this is gonna be much better in the future. Okay, so the starter deck. This is one of, if not your best, if someone targets. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's a 7-7, seven, seven, so big stats. It heals you when you summon it, so that's good. It pops anything. This card's just really strong. It's just really strong. And obviously the counter as well. They didn't talk about the counter, but yeah, the counter just, you know, the, the time genie counter is really good. This is your other Abyss Summoner, Big Boy Abyss Summoner. Um, basically just worse Alighieri, but you get to strike in exchange. Death Sally. This is my favorite level 2 one to summon because it's a 5-5-2, five, five, so the boy is big. Uh, and it's really cheap to Abyss Summon, and it gets Defender as well if you Abyss Summon it. Just, in my opinion, just so much better than Shadrick and that kind of stuff. Mm. Follower of Duonic Dragon. <sighs> I think this card sucks, but maybe it'll be better. Maybe. I'm not a big fan of it, though. Black Knight Guys. This card's pretty decent. Uh, in that dark stack, uh, it's additional mill, it's a 4 attacking level 0, which is nice, uh, it's a warrior, darkness, which is also nice traits. So uh, yeah, I think this I think this card is, is okay. That can I re her? I think this card's just bad. Army of Darkness. Uh, so this is um, an interesting one, um, because I just don't think it's very good. I think it's kind of a trap as well. Um, like, yeah, cool, I can get back Abyss Summoners from my damage, but the thing to remember is a lot of the time you will just be sending your Abyss Summoners back to just make a summon. And yeah, I can hard play this to heal an Abyss Summoner out, but the odds of me being able to play it that turn are really, really low. So I actually think this is kind of a trap. Um, I actually don't like this card very much. Absolute Barrier. Um, this is, you know... This is my null of choice. The fact that it's a counter is physically painful um, because that's how they balance Volnar. <laughs> Fair enough. But mm. uh, this card is also bad. Time Eating Genie, 4 1 2 with that big boy, <laughs> a big boy counter. Uh, I also think this card's pretty bad, but um, it's trader attributed, so maybe that will be relevant in the future. We'll see. Oh, Zolta. This card's very good. Look at the traits. Thunder, Dragon, Dragon Lord, Fire. If Fire and Thunder are, 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 are words are ever relevant, cool. Dragon, you can creation summon it, Genesis summon it. It's a 773. Pure stats. 
This thing is terrifying. Um, your opponent, this, this immediately becomes priority number one whenever you play it down. Uh, it's super good. Do not sleep on the power of this card at all. It's really, really strong. The final card for this review is Black Knight Zahar. This is a warrior traitor darkness, so great traits again. 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Really, really, uh, with breakthroughs, so that's really nice. And it gets plus one attack for every Black Knight in cemetery. So, whilst at the moment this card is kind of okay, come set two, I think it's going to be a lot better as we get more Black Knight support. We see the ability to just... Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure Abyss Summon's actually going to be good next set. Uh, at the moment, I really don't think it is. But I think next set it will be. And uh, Zahar, I think, is going to be a big part of that. And that's that. That is... The Volnar card review. I hope you guys found it useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video, sub to the channel. Um, I don't think I've got any other shilling to do, so join my Discord, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.